I'm hoping that my research will be able to prevent type 1 diabetes from occurring in the first place. That will be the ultimate therapeutic. I started my research in Toronto, so the home of insulin, and that's where I really got excited about diabetes research. And I think the only other place in the world that's better known for diabetes research than Toronto is Boston. So we are in the center of everything here. We have access to every resource that you can imagine, both established technologies as well as cutting edge research that's coming out of some of these different institutions. It's this integrated approach to science and biology that's really going to allow us to tackle this really complex problem and move towards a cure. So as you start to develop the type 1 diabetes disease, before you're diagnosed, you start to lose control of your blood glucose levels. And one of these first stages of dysfunction, your fat tissue starts to inappropriately secrete a number of different factors. A factor is a protein, in this case it's a protein, that's being secreted from your fat tissue. This one protein that we're looking at is called fatty acid binding protein 4, FABP4. As its name suggests, it binds to fats in the circulation. And that seems to be interacting with the beta cell. So it's in these early stages when you're having minor changes in your blood glucose levels, minor changes in your metabolism, your fat tissue starts to dysfunction and this FABP4 becomes secreted. So the idea here would that be between when the FABP4 is secreted from your fat tissue and before it has this adverse effect on beta cell function, we could target it. So by preventing that interaction with the beta cell, we're hoping to be able to preserve beta cell function, prevent the detrimental effects of FABP4, and thus prevent type 1 diabetes in the end. Without JDRF, we really wouldn't have the funding to be able to do that. It's really allowed us to accelerate our research forward much more dramatically.